The return of supersonic travel took a step closer to reality when private flight provider FlexJet placed an order for 20 of Ariane's AS2 business jets at the 2015 NBAA show in Las Vegas. Assuming it enters service as planned in 2023, the supersonic jet will be offered as part of FlexJet's fleet that clients can charter for long-range trips. It's exciting to be on the edge of supersonic. We think of all the products I've looked at, first of all, it's revolutionary. It really fits with our market strategy. It really is the one airplane that is so tailored for what we're doing in the international market that it fit perfectly. Customers even offered us suggestions on what routes they would put them on. Because we explained to them, you know, because of the size of the aircraft and the, and the ramp support it's gonna need, it really is a city pair aircraft. Our perspective is it's not your only corporate jet. FlexJet approached around 40 of its best customers to gauge their interest in a supersonic jet. The positive response led them to double their planned order from 10 to 20 aircraft. Operating costs could be at least twice those of a normal business jet, but the AS2 promises an exceptional combination of range and speed. By us endorsing the product, the probability that they can bring suppliers and bring focus to the program is going to increase, and then that means we really get a plane. So that's, that's, that's why we went in early. Uh, I mean, our risk and the program will increase as we get closer to real deliveries. And by doing this, you could assume that we would have gotten some exclusivity against competition and you know some favored pricing and so on. The program, which some has viewed as a somewhat fanciful dream since the demise of the Concorde airliner in 2003, has been further boosted by an increased commitment of Airbus to support engineering work as the AS2 heads towards the production phase. What Airbus brings to Arion is the resources, the engineering resources, but also the supplier resources that Arion needs to get the airplane across the goal line. And just recently at MBAA again this year, they have further enhanced the collaboration effort so that Airbus will be a supplier of the fuselage, the wing, landing gear, hydraulic systems, fly-by-wire, and they will actually ship components of the airframe from Europe, so all those components will come to our facility where we'll have final assembly and we'll have the certification type certificate by Arian. Arian says the AS2 will fundamentally change the value proposition of private flying, offering more of the one commodity that isn't increasing, time. So if you take a typical mission of this airplane versus a typical mission of, let's say, a Gulfstream G650, which right now is the fastest airplane in business aviation, our airplane that will fly a trip from London to New York will do it two hours and 30 minutes quicker than the G650, primarily because we're at Mach 1.4 over water, they're going to be at 0.9. So when you look at the average mission of a G650, which may fly 220,000 nautical miles in 500 hours a year, our airplane will fly the same 220,000 miles, but we'll do it in 237 hours. So if you look at a 12-hour day, we're going to save 17 days a year for the average CEO that's going to be traveling around the world that will be on the ground versus in the cabin. What Arian believes will make the AS2 a more pragmatic solution to the quest for supersonic travel is that it can travel at the high end of subsonic speeds where this is required, before full throttling to Mach 1.4 to shrink the globe for its passengers. It's really the time for supersonic. If you look at everyone that's tried to break the sound barrier, there's been some attempts, but we're, we've got the technology of supersonic natural laminar flow. We actually own 50 patents on supersonic natural laminar flow. And what that really means is we're allowed to fly through the air at two sweet spots, one at 0.95, which is subsonic, but it allows us to fly at 5,300 nautical miles. But we can also fly at 1.4, which is supersonic, which allows us to fly at 4,700 nautical miles. So the technology around Arion's platform not only allows us to fly very fast, but also allows us to fly at subsonic speeds at long range cruise, which the Concorde, which was the first supersonic airplane, really didn't have that luxury. It was all power. It didn't have the laminar flow of our aircraft. 